You're busy, very busy. You may rarely eat meals sitting down. Maybe even bathroom breaks seem laughable. I know and I sympathize. But to actually practice evidence-based nursing, someone has to be keeping up with what's being published. And guess what? That someone has to be you. This is usually where nursing students and practicing nurses laugh at me or at least roll their eyes in my general direction. I mean, how can you possibly find time to read nursing journals when you don't have time to meet your basic physical needs? I'm going to show you how you can keep current in your field without investing a ton of time. So first of all, we need to answer the why bother question. Can't we just let someone else keep up with this stuff and then they'll teach us what to do? I really wish we could but you may not work in a setting where everyone else is taking charge of making sure that current practices are evidence-based. This is how so many practices become outdated. We just continue to do what we were initially taught because we don't make the time to learn new methods. No shame in that, it's just the plain truth of healthcare. But what was best practices five years ago may not be so today. And if you're not keeping up on the latest developments, you may be missing opportunities to improve patient care. And it's not all about the patient. A lot of research has to do with professional issues as well. You may or may not have seen this slide before, but it bears repeating. These statistics are just plain ridiculous. If we all make an effort to keep up with the medical and nursing literature, we can make these numbers change. Keeping up to date is important, but where to start? First of all, this is not about sitting down and reading a bunch of nursing journals from cover to cover. This process is about being selective and only going through what's relevant and helpful for you. Are you a wound care nurse? Well, don't spend time reading about issues related to labor and delivery. Do you work in the NICU? Then just focus on that. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. The first strategy you can use to keep up is to go through journal table of contents. Look closely at the phrase, table of contents. This is important. You're almost never going to read a journal from beginning to end, mainly because not every article is going to be relevant to your current work. This will happen even if it's a journal in your particular field. This is a reason to celebrate. You don't have to read everything. Hooray! So, how do you get the table of contents for journals? So, first of all, how do you know which journals to follow? You might know some already just from your work as a student or from your work as a nurse. Also, ask around. See what other people are reading, especially your professors. If all else fails, you can always run a search on Google. Just type in the field or specialty you're interested in and then add the word journals. So we'll do neonatal journals. Then just browse through the titles that come up and click on the one you are the most interested in. Or more than one, of course. You can go through the recent issues, look through the current table of contents, and see if they talk about topics that are relevant to you. If it looks like a good fit for your needs, go ahead and sign up. You'll be looking for something that says journal alerts or table of contents. In this case, it's get new contents alerts. And that's where you'll do uh, email, address, a password, or just register. Not all journals will make you register, thankfully. Usually it's a pretty easy process. You'll now start receiving emails from the journal. These can be as often as every week to as few as just one to two a year. Here's what one table of contents looks like from the American Journal of Nursing. One of the really cool things about a lot of these journals is that they have continuing education that you can get just by reading an article and taking a test. Very cool. As I mentioned earlier, even journals in your specific field may have irrelevant articles. And there may be really cool articles on a topic that interests you that are in journals you wouldn't normally read. Thankfully, databases make it easy to create search alerts on whatever you want. You can do this in CINAHL, but I'm going to teach you how to do it in PubMed, mainly because you'll always have access to PubMed, even if you're not a student. Now, this is going to take a little more work than signing up for a journal alert, but it will be worth the extra time. In order to run a search alert, first you have to do a search. Well, duh. The area of late preterm infants has seen a lot of developments over the last five to ten years. So if you work with moms and babies, this is a good area to keep up on, and that's what we'll use as an example. So in order to search, you can use any sort of search that you want. I'm just going to put late preterms in quotes. That means it's going to force PubMed to search this as a phrase. Now I'm going to search. Okay, it has a 
about 900, which is actually not very much. I know you may laugh at that, but in a database that has more than like 24 million citations, 900 is not very much. If you had a lot more, you might want to narrow your search from here. In order to do that, you can use some of the filters that are on the side, like article type, species. You can also show additional filters such as subjects, journal categories, or ages. For this one, since there isn't that many, I'm just going to keep it as is. And once you're happy with your search, it's time to save it. In order to do this, you go right underneath the search box. There's a link that says Save Search. Click on that. Now, if you don't have a PubMed account, it would prompt you here to go ahead and create one. This is a free account. All you need to do is create a username and password, and it's super useful, even outside of just saving searches. Once you've created your account and signed in, then you have some options here. You can change the name of your search, and this will be what shows up in your email. So if late to preterm isn't specific enough for you, you might want to change that. This is where you can change or add to your search terms. The next field down is your email update. So would you like email update new search results? Yes, that's why I'm doing it. Ask you to double check your email address, then ask you how often you want it. Monthly, maybe if it's something that's um, not very common, if it's something where there are not a lot of things are published, monthly is fine. If there's more stuff you might want weekly, daily, that just isn't going to work for anybody. You can even choose the day of the week. Maybe if you have a quiet day or a quieter day, that might be the best day to choose. You can choose just the summary format, which is pretty much the article title and the author. You can also choose abstract or a couple other options. It's a summary or abstract or best. Summary is probably your best bet because then it won't make your email quite so long. And then you can say how many items do you want? So if this late preterm has maybe 30 new articles in a month, do you want them to show all of them? Or you only want five? I would max it out at about 50 because you're not really going to want to browse through any more than that. And if you want to add more text, then you can. From here, you click save and you're good to go. You can also use the MeSH database to search. This is where you find all the medical subject headings that PubMed uses. It's kind of geeky, but it's a really great way to build a search. In order to get to the MeSH database from PubMed, you go to PubMed's main page and you just go to MeSH database. And from here, you can type any search terms you want. It's probably no surprise that I'm a little bit obsessed with evidence-based practice, and I like to read as much as is possible on this topic. What I'm really interested in is how to best teach nursing students and nurses how to engage in research in evidence-based nursing. So I'm just going to type in nursing research. Now here are all the medical subject headings that match my terms. There is one on nursing research exactly, but there's also some related ones. I'm going to start with the top one. When you click on the link for the term, it's going to bring up all this information. It's got a nice little definition, the year it was introduced, these wonderful things called subheadings, which can make your search a little more specific. But it's also got this thing called the mesh tree. This is way more advanced, but the only thing I want to show here is that nursing research includes all those other nursing research terms. So I don't have to search on those individually. If I select nursing research, it searches all these automatically. Yay! So again, I'm interested in the education aspect of nursing research. There is a lovely subheading just for that. So I'm going to click on it and add it to my search builder. This is not searching in PubMed yet, so we can add more searches. So maybe I want to add evidence-based nursing to that as well. All right, again, you see a very similar screen, the definition, the subheadings, and all of that. There is an education subheading, so I'm going to add this as well. So now I have nursing research education and evidence-based nursing education. Now I'm ready to search in PubMed. So you click on search PubMed. 84, oh my gosh, it's even smaller than our last search. But it's some new articles and some interesting articles that I think I might like. So we can save our search. You can change the name. You can change any of those options here as to how frequently you want it and how many items you want to actually appear in your emails. When you're done, you click save and then emails will start coming to you as soon as new information is published. Now, the most important step is to actually read the emails you get that have the table of contents or the search alerts. This doesn't have to take a ton of time. Just quickly scan the table of contents or your search alerts. Generally, there's only going to be one to two articles you're going to want to read. Either read them right there, trust me, you'll forget to come back to that email, save them somewhere you won't forget, or print the articles off. 
I get the table of contents from probably 20 journals and I have four to five search alerts set up. Even with all this, I spend maybe one hour a week reading articles. Actually, getting the articles can be the tricky part, especially once you leave the university setting because you're not going to have access to nearly as many journals. Some of you may be lucky and you'll have a library either at your hospital or one affiliated with a larger institution. For the rest, check with a nurse educator or someone involved with continuing education. They may have access to what you need. You also can place interlibrary loan requests from most public libraries. Don't forget that. Finally, and I did not say this, ask someone you know who is still at a university if they can get a copy for you. Remember, evidence-based practice is nothing if you don't keep up with the research. You do not have to be buried in books and articles if you selectively subscribe to the journal table of contents and search alerts. Also, don't forget social media. A lot of the big journals are on both Facebook and Twitter. Follow or like the ones you're interested in and you can keep up where you already are. You know the concept of having an exercise buddy, someone who keeps you accountable and cheers you on at the same time? Well, a journal club can serve the same purpose. You can form one on your own unit or even on Facebook or via email. Choose one to two articles a month and everyone has to read and discuss it. So keeping up with the nursing literature is absolutely essential, but it doesn't have to be a time-killing chore. Try to use at least one of the strategies you learned about here and you'll be well on your way to becoming a literature reading rock star.